Luke chapter 24, verse 49. My own thing. <clears throat> there say amen. amen. Verse 49. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Let's pray. God, we love you. We come to you in Jesus' name. Thank you. For each one that's come this way, God. Thank you, like Brother David said, on a cool, rainy night. God, we got people that love you, Lord, and still want to come out in the, in the rain to worship you and honor you and lift up Jesus. I, I thank you, God, for a good church and all that you've given us and the blessings upon us. Lord, and I pray right now, Lord, you move me out of the way tonight, God. Help me to preach tonight, God, and do something that I can't do on my own. We know that, God. You know that, Lord. God, whatever done tonight, we want to lift you up and we praise you for all you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Preached uh, 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 last week, or I think it was last week, and got a phone call when I got home. Brother Bear called me and said, Preacher, I was, something you said kind of made me think about some things. And he'd been Googling something, and, and I, I, I couldn't remember what he told me, so I Googled something. And uh, what I can find out, and Bear, I might be, you might be on different pages, okay? There's 3,573 different promises in the Bible. I want to preach a little while tonight on some sure promises. 3,573. Now, I'm not going to preach on all 3,573 of them. Amen. I'm going to preach on uh, uh, seven. Amen. But uh, y'all pray for us. But the first promise in the Bible is in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy sin and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. This was fulfilled in Luke chapter 2, verse 7. And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for him in the end. The last promise in the Bible is found in Revelation 22, verse 20. He which testifies these things says, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. That one hadn't happened yet. But I believe it's close, amen. amen. He's coming. So I want to look at seven promises, and uh, I, I'll be—I'll probably be brief tonight. You pray for me. The more you holler at me, the faster I'll preach. Go ahead. Preach. Amen. amen. Number one, the promises of God are sure. Amen. We've got some sure promises, amen. The Bible says in First Kings chapter eight, verse fifty-six: "Blessed be the Lord." that hath given us rest unto his people Israel, according to all that he promised, there hath not failed one word of all his good promises, which he promised by the hand of Moses, his servant. Understand something. There has not failed one time on the promises of God. That God had promised you one thing that he has not fulfilled. And if it hadn't come to pass, it's because something you've done. It's not because something God done. Amen. The Bible goes on to say in Joshua chapter 21 verse 45, there fell not all, that means any, amen, of any good thing which the Lord has spoken into the house of Israel. All came to pass. Joshua chapter 23 verse 14, and behold this day I am going the way of all the earth. Ye know that in all your hearts and all your souls that not, not one thing has failed of all the good things which the Lord your God spake concerning you are come to pass to you. And not one thing has failed that other. Aren't you glad we serve a God that has promised us a lot of things and has, and has already given everything that we need. He has promised us eternal life. I got it. Amen. Think about all the promises that I said. 3,573. And every one of them will come to pass. Amen. We got some sure promises. We got a sure foundation. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 28, verse 16, Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19 and 20 says this, Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles, the prophets, Jesus Christ himself, being the chief cornerstone. Aren't you glad we're on a solid foundation? Glory to God. I'm glad I'm not on a foundation like the Mormons. They ain't got no idea what they believe half the time. I'm glad I'm not on a solid I'm, I'm glad I'm not on a foundation like the Jehovah's Witnesses. They don't have no idea what's going on half the time. But glory to God, if you'll go back from the beginning, and from, from the beginning of time, you go all the way through the Old Testament, and when you hit the New Testament, everything that was in the Old Testament was fulfilled. It's a sure foundation. Jesus Christ is the same today, yesterday, and and forevermore. Amen. I mean, there have been a lot of times that I've shook, but glory to God, the foundation ain't never shook. Amen. We can stand on the solid rock. 
tonight, folks. We have a sure foundation. It has not moved. And if it was good enough for our grandparents, glory to God, it's good enough for us. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to do it. But I saw a preacher one time, Preacher Mike. He said, I'm telling you right now, this thing right here is true. He dug it down and just stood right on top of it. He said, I'll stand on it till Jesus comes. Amen. It's a sure foundation. We got a sure foundation. We've also got the promise of a sure reward. Amen. Matthew chapter 10, verse 42 says this. And whosoever shall give drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water only in the name of a disciple, verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. Whatever you and I do for God will be rewarded. Amen. I, I, I thought about it a lot. I wonder why God blesses this Easter plate that we're getting ready to start doing. Do you know why God blesses that Easter plate? Because there's a lot of effort and prayer put into it. Understand this. Preacher Buddy C. said something one time. He said, man can give awards, but God is the only one that can give the reward. Amen. I'm not, I, let me tell you something. I love this church. There ain't no other church in the world like Liberty Freeman Baby Church. But I don't work for you. I'm not working for a paycheck that I get from the church. I'm working for a reward that I'm going to get over in glory, God. And I'm telling you right now, folks, the more you and I can do for God, the greater is going to be the reward. You understand something? Mark chapter 9, verse 41. For whosoever shall give a cup of water and drink in my name, because ye belong to Christ, verily I say unto you, you shall not lose his reward. In other words, what he's saying, it don't matter what little thing you do. You might not be the preacher. You might not be the choir leader. You might not be singing the choir. And maybe all you can do is sit on the pew and pray for somebody. If that's all you can do, then glory to God, you do it to the best of your ability. Because God, Jesus Christ said, hey, you can't even give a cup of cold water in somebody's name that you're not going to get. God is paying attention. Amen. God is keeping score. Understand that. I'm not keeping score. You're not doing it for the preacher. You're not doing it for the deacon. You're not even doing it for this church. Whatever we do, we do for Jesus. Amen. Every time you witness to somebody, you witness to them for Jesus. And understand this, every time we put forth that effort, listen, when you witness to them, they might not get saved. God didn't tell you to say that. He said that's his job. But he told you to witness. And he told you to do your job. And I'm telling you right now, I'm just telling you right now, the Word of God will not come back void. If we'll do our job, He'll do his job. Amen. That's a sure promise right there. Amen. In his book, The Way to Glory, C.S. Lewis notes how believers often underestimate, underestimate the full riches of God for his children. If we consider, now listen, if we consider the staggering nature of the rewards promised in the gospel, it would seem that our Lord finds our desires not too strong but too weak. <clears throat> we are half-hearted creatures, like an ignorant child who wants to go on making mud pies in the slum because he cannot imagine what is meant to offer by a holiday. We're too far easily pleased. And I'm going to give you a good example of this. We gathered and had prayer before, after we had our, our meeting afternoon, this afternoon for Easter play. And after the prayer, I challenged everybody. I said, from here on out, let's pray. For 25 souls to be saved. Amen. Brother Melvin spoke up and said, Preacher, I was praying for 100. I said, Glory to God, I like him better. Amen. Oh, you said, Preacher, that's just foolish. Why is it foolish? I'm the one, I said, I, I know God can do it. I know God can do it. it the problem is, we said here, Scott, if we don't give God enough credit for being able to do it. Amen. Most of us pray, most of us pray, uh, uh, I hate to say it like this, most of us pray silly prayers. Amen. We pray silly prayers, Lord, I, Lord, if you just meet this one little need, God, just, just, just this one little need. And God already said, I'll give you the desires of your heart. Why in the world are you praying for one little need? I got a great big old God that's got, hey, I'm telling you right now, folks, he's got it all. Hey, I, I, I want you to understand, I'm going to quit praying some of the time. I, I'll be honest with you. There's been times, Brother Robert, that I pray, Lord, if you'll just meet this need, I'll pray, I'll pray. I ought to be saying, Lord, if you meet this need, or if you don't meet this need, I'm going to praise you. It don't matter what happens. Amen. 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 Don't shortchange God. I mean, he said, if I give a cup of water 
in Jesus' name. And God's keeping score. What in the world is God going to do if I witness to somebody every day? Amen. Amen. Don't shortchange God, folks. He's got it all anyhow. The problem is we don't, we don't trust Him. And we're assured of, of having acceptance. John chapter 3, verse 6, John chapter 6, verse 37. All that the Father gives me shall come to me, and him that cometh unto me, I will in no wise cast out. Think about what that just said. Amen. Aren't you glad, Sandy Logan, that that verse is in there? Somebody that used to run with the motorcycle gang and do all kind of ungodliness. Aren't you glad, Scoopy, that verse is in there? He didn't say you gotta clean yourself up. He didn't say you gotta do this, this, and this. You ain't gotta go through 12 programs. You ain't gotta go through all that. He that comes unto me, I will in no wise cast out. In other words, Jesus said, Hey, I died for everybody, and I want everybody to come. Amen. The Bible says in Psalms 102, verse 17, He will regard the prayer of the destitute and not despise their prayer. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Romans chapter 5, verse 20. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin did abound, grace did much more abound. Glory to God. I'm so glad. It don't matter how bad I was. It don't matter how far deep in sin I was. All I had to do was cry out to the Savior, and He said, I will save you. If we knew everybody's background in this building. Now listen. If we knew everybody's background in this building. We could start over here and say, nah, I, 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 and don't, don't nobody move. I'd start over here and say, all right, all, all, all the drunks and drug addicts and all y'all that was real, real bad, stand over here. All right, now, some of y'all that did a little bit of that stuff, but you wasn't that bad, let's stand right here. All right, some of y'all that never drank anything, but you know you, you gambled a little bit, you cussed a little bit, you did something. Y'all stand right here. And all the way from that wall to this wall over here. And I can have a cold stand right here. Everybody between both walls is still going to hell. And it didn't take no more grace to save Scoopy Miller than it did to save me. Jesus said, if you'll come, I will in no wise cast you out. Amen. He didn't say you gotta, you gotta clean up nothing. He just said, come. Amen. Amen. Just come. Amen. Great. I got a thing about this all soon. Grace can't be explained. I'm telling you, ain't, ain't a man alive can explain grace. I can, I can call on scholar after scholar after scholar, and they will not, Trevor, be able to explain to me, I mean in great detail, grace. I know it's unmerited favor, but you tell me how a God <coughs> can say, and, and, and put it in, in, in terms we explain. Scoopy and Sandy, I've heard both of them talk about, I've talked about their testimony. Talk about how, how far down they was and how bad they was and all this other kind of stuff. And listen, and, I, and, the, and the honestly, preacher Mike, what these boys that went through it and brought in the bucket to what some people do. Explain to me grace. Now listen, how many of you ever heard of Tex Watson? If y'all know who Tex Watson was, raise your hand. All right, put your hand in. How many of you ever heard of Charles Manson? Tex Watson... <coughs> was Charles Manson's right-hand man. Charles Manson at the most may have killed two people. Tex Watson killed all the rest of them. Explain to me how grace can come down on Tex Watson just the same as grace can come down on this little young man right here. The same God died on that cross for this precious little soul right here. Died on that cross for Tex Watson. And just to let y'all know, Tex Watson got saved in prison and has, a, and has and had a prison ministry for almost 50 years. One of these days, Scoop, me and you're going to get to meet him. Amen? I'm going I'm to go to heaven and shake Tex Watson's hand. How can Grace explain that? You can't explain that. But Jesus just said, come. I'm telling you right now, if Adolf Hitler would have come and with a broken heart, I believe Jesus would have saved him. Amen. That's grace, folks. That's, and, and let me tell you something. That's 
sure promise. Amen. That's a sure promise. We got a promise of divine love. Romans chapter 8, verse 38 and 39. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That is a promise right there. A promise that God's going to love us no matter what. We've all talked about how, how, how we've had sin in our life. We've all talked about where God brought us from. But you understand something. God died for you while you were doing that. The love of God was already there. God don't love you no more right now, Wes, than He did when you was a drunk. Nothing. That is, a, that is a divine promise that God loves us. I don't care how bad we get. I don't care how low down we get. I'm telling you, the devil will tell you God don't love you. The devil will tell you you might well go on out there in the backwoods somewhere and kill yourself. The devil will try to talk you into doing all kinds of manner of things. And he'll tell you God don't love you. That's a lie out of hell. Because the Bible says God does love us. Amen. Come on, Richard. Romans chapter 8, verse 35 to 37 says this. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Our tribulation. Shall be distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, as it is written, for thy sake, that we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep to slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. In all what things? In all these tribulations, we're more than conquerors. In all this distress, we are more than conquerors. In all this persecution or famine, we are more than conquerors. In all this nakedness and peril and sword, we are more than conquerors. Why? Because Jesus loves me. Amen. Amen. Jesus loves me, Brother Wayne, but I don't even love myself. Amen. We have a divine love. Understand something. If you say it tonight, and you listen, if you say it tonight, we have a sure immortality. Amen. We are going to live forever. Amen. Without a doubt. Second, uh, Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 1. For we know that our earth and house of this tabernacle were dissolved. We have a building of God. A house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. Amen. Jesus said in John chapter 14. He said let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am there ye may be also. Amen. Understand something. He's going to prepare a place for he ain't preparing a place for somebody that's going to die. He's not preparing a place for somebody that's just going to go out in the darkness. He's not preparing a place for somebody that's just going to be put in the grave and lay in that coffin. I'm telling you, he's preparing a place for me. One of these days, this old body is going to go back to the ground. They're going to they bury me. I don't know. We might run out of money. They might cremate me. I don't really care. But I'm telling you right now, I'm going back to the dust. But if, my soul is going to be in heaven. I'll live forever and forever. I ain't waiting on eternal life. I already got it. Amen. I already got it. I'm telling you right now, folks, that it's going to come a day. If time lasts, and this old body here is going to give out. It's going to lay down one day and not get back up, Jeff. But I'm telling you, I got something inside me that's getting up. Amen. 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 I got something inside me that's getting up. Amen. And I'm going to be with Jesus. Amen. And we also, listen, we also got a promise of a sure anchor. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19 says this. Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth in to that within the veil. What's the anchor? An anchor is something that secures. Something that secures. I'm telling you, you can be in the worst storm of your life. And we got an anchor. Amen. Amen. Anchors aren't, aren't only used in storms. Sometimes anchors are used just to stop and take a break. Hey Amen. I got an anchor. The thing about it is, until you've ever felt a storm, you'll never know how to trust the anchor. Amen. Hey Amen. Until you've ever felt the storm, you'll never know how to trust the anchor. That's right. Amen. Folks, I'm telling you. 
we got some promises in this Bible. Amen. I am assured of this. Yes. I don't know what I'm going to face next week. I don't. I don't know what you're facing right now. But I know without a shadow of doubt, i got an anchor. Amen. And all i got to do is throw it out, preacher Mike. Amen. Amen. i got an anchor that will walk to me on the water. Praise God. Amen. i got an anchor that will come to me in my time of need. i got an anchor that will wake up out off the boat and calm the storm for me. Amen. Amen. <laughs> i got an anchor that I ain't got to throw out. Glory Amen. to God. Amen. He knows when I'm doing it. Amen. <laughs> we got some problems. <clears throat> Why don't we start living like we got some promises? Why don't we start praying like we got some promises? Why don't we start claiming some of the promises? They're there. They're there. I look back and I see Barry and Lori. And, I, and, and, and you know, Barry just testified just a few weeks ago about, about how God brought them through some trouble and trial. And I, I remember just a few years ago, Barry, when y'all was thinking about starting that business. And, I, and, and listen, and I, and I know that they prayed, and I know they prayed. Let's just be honest. When you were praying for this business, did you think God was going to bless it like He has? That's what I'm talking about. We sell God short. I tell people, I, I tell people, man, we in a building program. What kind of building y'all building? So, man, we building a life center. So what in the world's a life center? I said, well, it's going to have a fellowship ball, a big kitchen, going to have a basketball court. How big is it? I said, it's about 80 by 165. They said, what? <laughs> My goodness, that's a big building. I said, I got a big God. Uh, amen. 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 Glory to God. He's got it all. Amen. Why don't we start praying? Amen. Like He's got it all. Amen. amen. Folks, I'm telling you, I believe it all in my heart. God's getting ready to do something at Liberty Frugal Baptist Church that's going to blow our minds. Amen. I believe that with all my heart. I, believe, I, I, I just feel it. I know the devil's going to fight. I mean, listen, I know that. I know that. I'm not worried about that. I still got God on my side. Amen. I'm assured of His love. I'm assured of His reward. I'm assured of His presence. I ain't got to worry about the devil fighting me. Amen. I just got to line up with what He wants. Amen. Follow Him. Amen. Let's start living like we believe there's 3,573 promises. Amen. Let's go for this.